Hi everyone, it is Jess here from the Scrappy Sisters and thank you for joining me for my third Kidaholics Kits design team layout for the month of, month of March. So I'm going to create a little rainbow across my page here using the super gorgeous um, inks that came in our kit. So what I have done, I've put a squirt of the ink into the palette and mixed that with a little bit of water. Um, just to have that already activated and ready to go. If you've watched my other videos, you'll see that I mentioned you should put water down on your page first. You can see here that I haven't, and the ink is not flowing onto the page as easily. It needs more and more and more applications. If you watched my first layout when I did the dark blue stripes, it just went on like butter, whereas this time I've had to apply it and apply it again. And apply it again and it's not just because I'm using my finger and not a brush because you'll see I did try the brush and it still wasn't working uh, it is purely because I didn't wet that page first I don't I haven't been prepping my page with gesso and you will be able to notice that because my pages have definitely warped I have used a lot of liquid on my pages and they have definitely warped so do be aware of that um, perhaps popping down some gesso might be more your thing with how you want um, your page to end up looking you can always get out an iron and flatten out your page I was actually going to do that I've definitely done that before but I had a case of the lazy boneses and so I just went with it um, it'll flatten out a bit once I put it inside its album anyway so just popping on some splatters and some flicks here and then once those have all been flicked on, basically all I'm doing is making sure my brush is really wet and then just shaking it really hard in a downward jab so that those blobs come off. I then get my heat gun. That also doesn't help with um, the warping, as in it makes it worse. If I had have been able to leave it to dry naturally, um, it would have warped a little bit less, but I was in a hurry. So I'm going to dry this little baby and then come back and be ready to create my layout. Ta-da! So first thing I did, which was really, really, really hard, was cut this beautiful rainbow paper because I only want a couple of those um, shoots of color and I was very brave and just cut them out. Just, yeah. Anyway, I was inspired with this layout by the super gorgeous Melissa Vining. Um, I saw she created a really beautiful layout using this same rainbow paper over on her Instagram page. I saw that um, and I just really loved the way she had her rainbow cut like this and shooting across her page. Now, my layout is different, of course, but yeah, she had her photo at the bottom of the rainbow and um, quite a lot of florally ephemera around it and all of that jazz. Um, but I just loved the inspiration that she gave me in how I was going to use this rainbow paper. So thank you, Melissa, for sharing such a gorgeous layout. Um, so as you can see, I wasn't a hundred percent sure the direction I was going when I started my painting. I knew I wanted rainbow and I knew I didn't want it going the entire way across my page. Um, but in the end, I've actually pulled the rainbow, um, papers to sort of come inwards so it's uh, skinnier at the bottom and arches out at the top so unfortunately the yellow paint didn't really do that but it looks totally fine so I've then drawn hand drawn a cloud on the back of the packaging for the ephemera because it's that sort of white color with the gray stripes and I think that works really well as a cloud and I'm just going to put that down in the bottom corner up on foam. So it's going to be my little, um, you know, cloud there coming out with the rainbow coming out. So it's going to go up on foam and the other bits and bobs are going to be stuck down with white glue directly to the page on top of their corresponding color. Obviously there was no green ink and I kind of attempted to make one with the, the mustard and the blue and just turned like a brown. I couldn't quite, I just couldn't even out how much blue to yellow ratio just was not working. So I gave up on that. I didn't want to waste my inks. So if you found a beautiful blue to yellow ratio in these two ink colors, 
please let me know. I'd love to make a green. Um, but I'm happy with how this looks. So, as I said, if I had have thought this through when I was doing the paint, I definitely would have moved that yellow stripe painting to come down as well. But it's, it's tears what it is, and it's totally fine. So, they are all stuck down, and my rainbow is done. So, I then off-screen back my photographs, and they are two little photos of my munchkin before I put up the baby gate around my craft area, literally crawling onto the bottom of my trolley. It's not a rascog, but that concept. Um, and getting into my craft supplies. And he thinks he is the funniest thing since sliced toast. So I decided to cover up the sudden ending of um, the rainbow up the top there I needed a little doily just to soften it up and to um, just make it not look too random that all of the paint and all of the paper just suddenly stopped so I dug through the ephemera from the collection um, oh so lovely and pulled out the bits and bobs that I thought really went with the photographs and the feel of the photographs and the color of the photographs but it wasn't enough so I'm now going to go back and dig some more you can see there I've got my kit sitting in the top of one of those iris trays um, sort of divided into section with my cutter parts and um, my extra bits and bobs didn't like the feel of those butterflies they didn't seem to go well I thought I didn't need another rainbow on a rainbow page so I put both of those back um, the love heart worked, but I decided I was just going to pull out and look through the entire of the other ephemera and just see what we think. Floral. When in doubt, get out a floral. So I'm actually going to use that ginormous piece, but I'm going to cut it in half and use it in two different places. Get the most out of that um, really big piece. Because I'm not very good at using big pieces as they are, um, but now that I'm brave enough to cut them things seem to work a little bit better for me. So yes, I did cut it into a random pie just so that it could fit around the corners. So I was really happy with how that was looking. So I'm gonna start popping it down. I can get a little bit caught up with planning my page and not doing my page. So I have to make sure that I get actually sticking. Otherwise, A, my process takes forever and B, I have a lot of video to edit and then I start second guessing everything because I don't have it glued down yet and I still have the option to move it. Um, I just noticed I was really happy with the placement of the photos. There was no issue until I realized that the top of that photo was actually hanging off the page just a smidge and I probably could have let it go but I thought I'll just pull it off and stick it down a, a little bit lower just to make sure it's not sticking off the page. Um, so just sticking on those two pieces of floral just to make sure um, they're in place first and then I can put my ephemera around that. So I'm just going to have a fiddle with a few little bits and pieces. There's a slight gap um, where the ephemera was cut out there so that little circle, pink circle, um, is just covering that. So now I'm free to just embellish however I like because there are no gaps, there's no issues and I can just go to town. That little panet flag at the top says only you because he would be the only one that gets away with doing something like that. Jack wouldn't dare, not because, you know, he's so divinely gorgeous. He just knows that's mommy's craft space. You don't do that. He's absolutely allowed to play and he has a massive stash of craft things, including his own paints and papers and scissors and stickers and glues and all of that and he'll often sit down and craft along with me but he's on the floor on the tiles where if there's a mess it's easy to clean up um, and he knows not to take any of mummy's craft things unless he asks first but Thomas doesn't know any better yet those big ticket things I find super tricky to use so when I thought it looked pretty good as a layer under there I was going with it. I was like, yes, put that in because <laughs> I struggle to get those used otherwise. I feel like that's the only way you can use them with just this tiny little smidge sticking out, which is such a waste. I, I And as I said before, 
about cutting those big things in half. I often will cut them in half and use them again, but on a piece of ephemera like that, where I struggled to use it in the first place, I'm not cutting that in half. It's just going to stay as it is. So just gluing everything down. Um, I end up putting this wagon down, oh, I suppose it's a wagon, a little shop front, down a little bit lower on the photograph. Um, just to kind of... Mm, I felt like, it's probably a little bit too low, let's be honest, but I felt like um, having it up higher was separating the clusters quite a lot, whereas having it down that bit lower just sort of ties all those clusters in together, almost like it's one big cluster around my photo. Uh, so yeah. Then once I've done that, I decide my rainbow needs some jazzing up so i pull out those gorgeous enamel dots again and color match again because everyone loves a little bit of tone on tone and then i have a problem with the blue because there is none so i have to swap the dark blue down to the light blue and then put the plum on the purple but that's all good it totally works and then i'm going to go with my title now i had a lot of trouble with my title i looked and looked and looked again I was like, mm, what am I going to call this? And I was going to get some completely different thickers and just call it, you know, you're the pot at the end of my rainbow or something like that. But I decided I would go with you are my sunshine because I think that that still relates to rainbows because you can't have a rainbow without the sun. And I could have definitely written you are my sunshine after the rain or something like that, but it was all just getting a little bit too long. So I'm just going to go with you are my sunshine. The A, by the way, in the word R, A-R-E, um, is an H that I've just pushed the top two sections of that H together to make it an A. Works like a dream. Um, and then the E is an F, but that's really common. So once I have got all that down, I then decide um, the holographic needs to spread its love again because I just really like it so I'm just going to pop a few stars in amongst the rainbow just one on each color stars and rainbows what more could you have butterflies probably stars rainbows hearts yeah loving it so here are my close-ups I just ah oh, I've said this every time but I just love the colors in those inks and look at that cheeky face oh to die for so thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed my layout. Um, I have still got one more to come after this. So thank you so much for sticking around and I will see you next time. Bye everyone. Have a great scrappy day.